Hello, and welcome to video number two in the series Mastering the INCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the INCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. This is the second video in the series and is focused on the um, system engineering process, business or mission analysis process. As we have discussed in the previous video, the System Engineering Handbook with its uh, system lifecycle processes and activities is a structured approach that's intended to provide system engineers ways for managing complex system design in the context of complex life cycles. So the systems themselves are very complex and the life cycles that they operate in, they developed and operate in are very complex. And so we need a structured systematic way of managing the process. And that's what the the handbook is all about. Within the handbook, there are 59 system engineering life cycle processes and activities. And those 59 uh, processes and activities are categorized or grouped into seven, uh, seven major groups. This video focuses on the first of those uh, processes, business or mission analysis process. So the learning objectives for this section, business or mission analysis process, is to answer the question, what is the purpose of the business mission analysis? What are the outputs of the process? What are the inputs of the process? And how is it done? What are the process activities? Um, one of the things that we'll touch on is the difference between OpsCon and ConOps. Good thing for all system engineers to know. And we'll also describe the um, output of the process, which is the business requirements specification and the associated business validation criteria. So when we're done with this presentation, those are all the things that you will have learned. So let's start off is what is the business or mission analysis process? So this is the very first thing that system engineers do. And as you can see on the bottom of that chart, uh, what it says is to define the problem or opportunity space. So we want to understand exactly what the issue is that we're trying to solve and all of the constraints and the context in which that solution must exist. I can't emphasize enough the importance of this activity. Um, in my own career, um, I would estimate it around seven out of 10 cases. Um, I was this, uh, assigned to a project and we took the customer's definition of the problem as uh, verbatim. We, we did not check it. And it turned out in the end that there were some gaps or some missing information or some um, some, some issues with the way that the problem was defined and, in, and the solution that we developed, sometimes costing on the orders of tens of millions of dollars, uh, didn't work. It failed to be deployed. So this activity of upfront defining um, the business or mission analysis, or what I call the context analysis, uh, provides the problem and opportunity space. So the system engineering handbook says the requirements definition begins with the business vision of the organization or enterprise. And I would emphasize at the word enterprise, not as a, in terms of a business, but in terms of a system of systems. And so you have to understand the enterprise in which your system will be deployed. And that includes the CONOPS, uh, with uh, the strategic goals and objectives of that enterprise, and then all of the constraints including in that third uh, section, uh, acquisition concept, deployment concept, operations concept, support concept, or retirement concept. So developing a solution without knowing how, how it's going to be deployed and how it's going to be supported out in the field through maintenance um, is, is, is failure to, to really fully understand the process. Um, so then all of this information is captured in a, a BRS, uh, called the Business Requirements Specification. Um, so, so just to kind of emphasize this point, it's just really critical to understand the full context and all of the constraints in which the system will be deployed, operate, maintained, and then, and then retired. You'd hate to build, end up building a, a system that really didn't um, meet the, the required context. Uh, figure 4.1, kind of is a little complex, but it summarizes the, the, uh, this topic, uh, business requirements spec. And it shows on the top of that diagram how uh, the business 
or mission analysis develops the concept of operations. That's a description of, of how the world works and how the process in which we're going to enhance uh, operates. And that leads to pre preliminary life cycle concepts, uh, an upcon acquisition deployment support and, and retirement. And all of that goes into this BRS, the business requirement specification. So just to take a little digression and touch on this, co this issue of operational concept versus concept of operations. Um, these two terms are kind of used interchangeably, so whenever you hear them, I think you have to kind of really think through it carefully. But according to the System Engineering Handbook and the um, IEEE and ISO uh, definitions, the, the, the CONOPS is a description of the context. It's a description of the process that's going to be enhanced or changed by the new technology or the system that's going to be deployed. And so this CONOPS captures all of the assumptions and the operations associated with that enterprise. Um, so it's a, a description of the way the world works today. The OpsCon, on the other hand, is that once we've developed the, the solution, it describes what the solution will look like and more importantly, why. So the, the OpsCon is the, is the future state, the 2B state um, of, the, of the process. Um, so that's captured in that uh, figure 4.1. Uh, you can see the CONOPS are part of the business or mission analysis, and the OpsCon comes much later in the definition of system requirements. All right, so we've got this process, the business or mission analysis, um, and uh, this is the uh, system engineering handbook definition of the inputs, activities, and, and outputs. Let's start on the right-hand side with the business requirement specification. This is the document that summarizes everything that we've learned in the analysis of the business or mission. So this is a written document. Um, it, it can, of course, have figures, diagrams, and you know, SysML um, uh, models, but it's fundamentally a, a written document narrative. And of course, it's got lots of process maps uh, and diagrams in it. Um, the, the activities uh, that's listed in the handbook is just a sequence of things that you have to do. Uh, you've got to prepare, you've got to provide, uh, define the problem or opportunity space, characterize the solution, evaluate alternative solution classes, not solutions, but classes of solutions, and then manage the process. So just a sequence of activities that you would expect to do. And then the third thing on the left is uh, the inputs, and that's pretty much everything you would ever need uh, to, to understand the, the context of the enterprise. Um, so you need to understand the, the CONOPS, the way the system works today, uh, the life cycle constraints, project constraints, and of course uh, the, the stakeholders. And we'll come back and talk about the importance of stakeholders in a minute. So the two main things that, that I think come out of this process are um, labeled in the upper right and that is the definition of the problem space and the opportunity space. So um, having a clear definition of, of the process and the issues associated with the process and where the opportunities for improvement are should be what's, what comes out of this. And to do that, that's an analytical process and it should use data as well as um, interviews with all the stakeholders. Um, the second thing is, um, is this idea of understanding who all the stakeholders are. Um, absolutely critical not to be surprised by a, a stakeholder or a group of stakeholders that are unwilling to allow the system to be deployed once it's already been built. So understanding the stakeholders and all of their constraints is very important. The business requirements specification is the main document that comes out of this. And as I said, it's kind of a narrative style. Uh, nothing wrong with having SysML or LML diagrams, figures, and tables in it. Um, of course, one of the main things you want to see is a, uh, a map of the process and data associated with the performance of that process that leads to the capability and performance gap. So in plain language, <clears throat> we have an enterprise that we're trying to improve. And that enterprise has associated with it a bunch of processes. We're system engineers and we're doing system engineering. So there's going to be a large complex set of interactions between processes. Um, but there is one process in particular that 
we are focusing on, and that's the one that's highlighted in the orange. And we're going to um, go and study that process in detail, understand what the inputs to that process are and the outputs of the process and all of the requirements and characteristics associated with that. And then we're going to instrument the process and measure the time, cost, and quality. So as system engineers, we're always trying to address time, cost, and quality and the relationships between those. So we're going to instrument the system to measure those and establish the performance or capability of the system. And then we're going to measure the um, time, cost, and quality of the sub-processes and to establish the performance capability of all of those and look for opportunities to improve those. So the performance capability gap is important to document. Um, this chart is not intended to provide a detailed uh, but just to provide some examples, on, um, on the lower part, um, we're always looking at some combination of time, cost, and quality, where quality may be defined by precision, by waste, by reliability, or a whole bunch of other parameters associated with the quality of the performance. Um, so this can be documented on the upper left-hand side as a gap between the current system or, and the, comp the competitive system or the capability of a system using new technology. In the middle, we find one of the main drivers of this gap is uh, changes in demand over time. And so uh, the actual capability can be uh, uh, not sufficient to meet uh, the, the changes in demand. And then on the right-hand side is just a recognition that many times the performance is not a deterministic or static performance gap, but a stochastic one associated with a range of values and what we're really trying to do is to show that the the time or the cost of the current process at uh, mu2 the average for number two is much greater than the uh, desired process performance shown by the average of one so understanding this performance capability gap is what's going to drive everything else that comes next and when we get done with the solution we're going to go back and measure this performance and make sure that it meets those capability performance gap requirements. So there are a lot of drivers associated with these uh, performance capability gaps. Uh, starting in the upper left-hand corner, uh, demand changes. Um, there can also be uh, moving uh, counterclockwise regulatory changes. Um, society changes too, not very fast, uh, but uh, if you're not alert to the societal um, values and uh, changing, one can get caught short. There are also uh, costs uh, can change. Um, costs can, in the supply chain can fluctuate. Uh, performance can be degraded over time, especially for mechanical systems as a result of entropy. And then finally, we've got uh, uh, the rapid pace you know, acceleration of technology changes. So in, in all of this business process analysis, um, we want to, uh, to document the process. And part of documenting that process is understanding who the stakeholders are. The way the system engineering handbook defines it, the stakeholder analysis is in a separate process activity uh, that comes next and will be the subject of the next video. Um, but the, the business or mission analysis process is going to document the process and in so doing, it's going to identify who the stakeholders are. One of the ways that uh, we think works very effectively to document this, this process um, is through a swim lane process diagram. So it's called a swim lane because all of the stakeholders have their own horizontal lanes in which they swim. And the information is passed back and forth between processes between all of the swim lanes. So, um, this is a, a, uh, the opportunity to, uh, to take a step back and, and see what you know about everything you've learned about the business or mission analysis process and activities. Um, so there are seven main items we've identified. Um, the first one is what group of processes and activities does business or mission analysis process fall under? Give a definition of business or mission analysis process. What is the main document generated by the business submission analysis process? Uh, list five types of information used as inputs to the uh, business submission analysis process. List one critical activity uh, that's performed within the business submissions analysis process. 
um, who is identified in the, the, the process, and then what is the difference between the ConOps and OpsCon. So at this point, uh, pause the video and uh, see if you can answer those questions uh, to, your, uh, to yourself. And then on the next slide is the answers uh, to, those, uh, to those questions. Um, so, so how well did you do? So thank you for, uh, for taking the time to go through this video. Um, that concludes this uh, section on business and mission analysis process. And the next one is video number three stakeholder needs and requirements. And if you liked the video, if you could give us a thumbs up, much appreciated. Thank you.